Welcome to the Seven Dials area of London. And Seven Dials is just a stone's throw away from Covent Garden. And unbelievably, this is one of the original areas that still bears the 17th century layout and is one of only a very few remaining in London from the Stuart period of England. So join us as we go up and down the cobbled streets around Seven Dials, which funnily enough, is a sundial with, guess how many dials? Six. Yes, the seventh one is actually the column. Getting to Seven Dials is really easy because it's right by Shaftesbury Avenue and also Leicester Square and Covent Garden as well. So it's really easy to get to. Seven Dials is a very small area of London, but it also represents a roundabout. Yes, you heard me right, a roundabout, but a very small roundabout with guess how many roads off it? That's right, seven. God, it seems to be a magical number around here. Now, what's really interesting is, as you can see, the corners of all of the different streets have got very small frontages on the shops. And the reason for that is that a lot of people paid a higher rent to have buildings actually within Seven Dials. So when they did the building round here, a lot of the places said, you know what? We actually want as little frontage on Seven Dials as possible because we won't be charged as much rent. Now, forgetting the building works that are going on and actually what they're doing is they're replacing the cobbles in the cobbled street here. So when it's done, it's gonna look absolutely beautiful. But Seven Dials is a wonderful area to come down. Also just off Seven Dials, you've also got Neil's Yard where you see some of the classic photos from within Neil's Yard of the multicolored windows and buildings in near Covent Garden. In the Middle Ages, the area was owned by the monastic hospital of St. Giles. This was the building that actually occupied the hospital. And as we go down here a little bit later, you'll actually see some previous evidence of that. But in 1537, King Henry VIII took control of it and later passed it on to private hands. In the early 17th century, the local estate here was actually known as Cock and Pie Fields, and it belonged to the Worshipful Company of Mercers, which to maximize its income in the West End, which wasn't actually earning much income, it allowed building licenses on what until was then open farmland. So this was actually open farmland until the late 1600s. The original layout of Seven Dials was laid out and designed by Thomas Neal, hence Neal's Yard just around the corner, during the early 1690s. And his original plan had six roads converging, although this number was later increased to the seven we've got now. Now, please don't tell anyone, but you see that Cafe Nero? It's fantastic. During the summer, they've got chairs on the outside so you can sit and watch the world go by in the heat of the summer. But also, you can go inside and see what's going on outside as well. And they've also got a hidden, tucked away basement where no one would ever find you. But don't tell anyone I told you because it's our secret, all right? Good, thank you very much. I trust you with that. Thomas Neal's hope was that the area around Seven Dials would be popular with wealthy residents. Unfortunately, this was not to be, and the status of the area gradually went downhill. At one stage, each of the seven apex buildings facing the column housed the pub. As you can see today, there is still one there. By the 19th century, Seven Dials was among the most notorious slums in London, as part of the slums of St Giles. The term Seven Dials became a sort of phrase for urban poverty during the early 20th century when Agatha Christie set her The Seven Dials Mystery in this place back in 1929. Now, to help with all of the changes, they changed all of the street names and this, which is now Monmouth Street, used to be Great St Andrew Street. As you can see now, this is probably what Thomas Neal hoped for when he did the original designs for Seven Dials. This is the north entrance into Neal's Yard, so you can get here from Monmouth Street, so you'll see the classic pictures, and we've put them on our social media quite a few times here at Neal's Yard. But this building we're looking at now, to the left, that would have been part of the original hospital. Of course, now it's Big Hotel.
Nearly all the shops around Seven Dials are now at sort of independent little boutiques or alternatively coffee shops or restaurants as well. If you're loving Seven Dials and you love London, then why not give us a thumbs up to help spread this video to more people. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, join us. You'll see all our videos coming to you. Now, all of this building we're looking at now would have been the original hospital, but look what they've put in the brickwork. Further evidence of its previous use, and once again, another reason to look up in London. The original sundial that had been put there when the whole thing was laid out back in the 1690s was removed in 1773, and it was long believed that it had been pulled down by an angry mob, but recent research has suggested it was deliberately removed by the paving commissioners in an attempt to rid the area of undesirables. The remnants of the original sundial were kept by an architect, James Payne, who kept them his house in Surrey, from where they were bought in 1820 by public subscription and re-erected in nearby Weybridge as a memorial to Princess Frederica Charlotte of Prussia, the Duchess of York and Albany. So if you've seen a sundial over in Weybridge by the library, that's where the original sundial came from because they couldn't put it on the original monument. There you go. If, you've, uh, if you do live down there, do send us some pictures. The sundial, which is in place now, was constructed in 1988 to the original design. It's incredible to think, isn't it, as we look around Seven Dials now, each of these buildings on the corner would have been originally pubs. So you've got a cafe, you've got a hairstyling shop by the looks of it, you've also got the theatre, and that's been showing Matilda there for absolute years. You've got a restaurant, which is that one there by Earlham Street, and then as we go around, you've now got a pub, and that's the only one that remains. Here, you've got a hotel, and finally, on the last corner, you've got an art gallery. So, whilst once upon a time there was a pub on every corner, now you've got food, drink, retail outlets, just mainly entertainment, really, because you've got that big theatre there as well. Both these roads would lead you down to Shaftesbury Avenue, but we've got one final thing we need to show you to look out for when you come down here. It's how to use the dials, the sundials. So outside the pub and the restaurant, you have this, and this shows you how to tell the time using the seven dials sundials. If you fancy the challenge, have a go. Alternatively, do what I did, get fed up with it and have a look at your watch. Much, much easier these days. So what did you think of Seven Dials? Now we've covered Seven Dials before, but funnily enough, I realized only at Christmas. So it's nice to see it in daylight and it's normality as well, especially with the cobbled streets. So what was your favorite bit? Do let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget, if you're over near Weybridge, do send us a picture of the old bits of the old Seven Dials as well. Now, if you're in Seven Dials and you fancy just going down the road to Covent Garden, the video up in the top right hand corner is 10 amazing things to do in Covent Garden. So if you click on that, I'll see you in there.